Wow. Three launch complexes, four launch pads is what SpaceX is about to get for Starship. One might wonder if there's any private space company in the world's aerospace industry capable of doing the same. Of course not. And SpaceX is unique. So in addition to the launch complex at Starbase and LC-39A, what new launch complex will SpaceX own for Starship? Why is SpaceX doing this? And what impact will it have on Starship's future development? Let's find out this and more in today's episode of Alpha Tech. The SpaceX Starship program is rapidly advancing beyond our imagination. With bustling activities at Starbase and continuous supply and production of rocket hardware, SpaceX scale is extremely large. Naturally, to serve this, the company's imperative requirement is to provide additional launch facilities. Simply put, we can understand that two to three launch towers will certainly not be enough to meet the demands of Starship. Recently, information about SpaceX's possibility of expanding its footprint to one of the largest launch pads at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, Space Launch Complex 37, SLC-37, is gaining more attention than ever. The history of SL-37 dates back to the 1960s when NASA used this site for eight launches of Saturn 1 and Saturn 1B rockets as part of the Apollo program preparations. This facility remained inactive for 30 years until Boeing took over and prepared SLC-37 for Delta IV rockets, which have since been launched 34 times from there. In the coming time, ULA still has one more Delta IV heavy rocket launch scheduled from SL-37 in March. Afterward, ULA will conduct operations at SLC-37 and ultimately transfer the facility to the Space Force to seek new tenants. Within a few months, industry sources have indicated that SpaceX is the leading candidate to take over SLC-37 once ULA completes its operations. This place, having hosted launches for more than half a century, will probably have the least impact on the environment. The launch pad currently consists of a 330-foot, 100-meter mobile gantry, a fixed service tower, a fixed umbilical tower, and a flame trench for Delta IV missions. Starship, the world's largest rocket, will not require any such infrastructure. Therefore, if SpaceX takes over the launch pad, this facility may be demolished and rebuilt extensively. On the other hand, we can't overlook the significant impact of the immense power of the Starship that's been demonstrated. Both of these factors indicate the decisions will need to be thoroughly researched and verified before SpaceX can start construction on this facility. With three direct public meetings and one virtual meeting scheduled for March to gather input from local residents, federal agencies like the FAA, NASA, and the Coast Guard led by the Air Force, will develop an Environmental Impact Statement, or EIS, to assess how Starship launch and landing operations will affect the land, air, and water surrounding SLC-37, located within the coastal compound of the Space Force on the Atlantic Ocean. Environmental studies for rocket launch facilities typically take over a year, so it'll take some time before any major construction begins to transition SLC-37 for Starship launches. In this case, federal officials are expected to publish a draft environmental impact statement in December, followed by the final report in October 2025. If SpaceX is not allowed to use SLC-37, the company could potentially build an entirely new launch pad called Space Launch Complex 50. SLC-50 would be constructed on undeveloped land north of SLC-37 and south of SpaceX's primary Falcon 9 rocket launch pad at Space Launch Complex 40. This is currently an undeveloped area of the facility, and conversion and construction of a new launch pad would require environmental impact studies to be completed prior to any construction there. If none of the two aforementioned options are suitable, SpaceX will not be allowed to construct any additional Starship launch pads at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. This is because NASA has stated that no new LC-49 pad studies or activities are underway from Kennedy Space Center side of the Eastern Range. At this time, there are no activities involving SC-49 on Kennedy, said Patty Beeling, a spokesperson for NASA. Any previous activities regarding LC-49 were suspended and no actions were taken. In fact, LC-49 was initially considered as an option to build SpaceX's Starship launch tower. Environmental studies by NASA at this location were conducted in 2021, but for various environmental reasons, the option was no longer pursued. If this were to happen, SpaceX may focus on collaborating with NASA to complete the current launch system at LC-39A, adjacent to the existing pad that hosts Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy launches. The Starship launch tower and pad at LC-39A were constructed by SpaceX in 2022. However, the company's made very little progress in recent years, partly due to teams focusing on Starship test flights from South Texas and partly due to NASA's concerns about the power of Starship. 
Although SpaceX has taken measures to address this, including building an additional Dragon Crew Tower at LC-40, NASA still seems dissatisfied with the location of the Starship's launch pad, both at the current LC-39A and crew launches from there, as well as LC-39B, where the Artemis SLS rocket may be on the pad for some time before launch. NASA's concerned that a launch accident could disrupt operations at both of these active launch sites. Therefore, work on the Starship launch system at LC-39A will be significantly slower and more long-term compared to the new options I presented above. And this would be problematic for both SpaceX and NASA, who are relying on Starship for the Artemis program and its lunar lander. It is possible that SpaceX and NASA could reach an agreement to complete the Starship launch mount at LC-39A at Kennedy Space Center, but that comes with its own issues. However, let's consider the most positive direction. This will be an opportunity for SpaceX to expand its launch facilities and prepare for a future period of explosive launch tempo. If all objectives are met, SpaceX plans to have three launch complexes housing a total of four Starship launch pads. These complexes will be located in three regions, Starbase Texas, LC-39A, and a new system in Florida. Specifically, Starbase Texas is expected to have two launch pads, with one already equipped with an existing launch tower and a second pad being constructed. This will result in Starship having four additional launch pads, along with launch systems dedicated to Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy. In Florida, they have a launch pad at LC-39A and another one at SLC-40. In California, they have a launch pad at SLC-4E, and they're about to take over another system, SLC-6. In general, best case scenario, SpaceX will have six launch complexes with eight launch pads. That's insane. How much more can SpaceX grow? Please leave your thoughts in the comments below. In this context, an issue that many people wonder about is why SpaceX doesn't continue to stay in Texas. SpaceX's launch facility in Texas at Boca Chica has a limited acceptable set of trajectories available to it. Florida's to the east, Texas and the Gulf states are to the north, and Cuba and other land masses are to the south. For test launches, Starship plans to thread a launch path over the Gulf of Mexico and then to orbit. From the eastern range, a much wider set of trajectories is available due to the Atlantic Ocean being mostly devoid of people or property over a much wider area. All things considered, Starship operations from the eastern range and the Cape are preferable destinations for SpaceX and NASA. Furthermore, Starship launches from the eastern range could easily bring billions of dollars in economic activity to the Space Coast region. SpaceX launches support jobs at the Cape, along with the associated jobs that are created to support the family of those workers, and, of course, tourism. As a major Starship launch port, the Space Coast would cement itself now and in the future as the starting point for space launches of all types. The area has seen boom and bust in its history, and having the most dominant commercial space company in the world using Cape Canaveral Space Force Station as its main operational site would all but ensure a prosperous future for the area. And that's all for today's episode. Thanks so much for watching, and see you next time.